Hello, I'm Miss Dissinger and today we're going to talk about how to complete a practical investigation for workplace practices. Step one is to brainstorm. This step requires you to brainstorm a list of ideas about all the things a person in your industry makes, does or uses. You should use the brainstorming resource, which is this one, which you can find on Canvas to help you successfully brainstorm these ideas. Some examples of these types of practical tasks can include for a childcare worker, how to plan and make a nutritious meal for a toddler. For a hairdresser, how to design and create an upstyle for a wedding. For a mechanic, it could be how to change a car tire. For a personal trainer, it could be how to plan and conduct a high intensity session for a client. For a carpenter, it could be how to design and create a wooden table. Once you have got your list ready on this resource, you will need to work with your teacher and come to a decision which one of these practical tasks you are able to safely complete and also one that you will have access to all the materials to be able to do the practical task. Step two, research and investigation. This step requires you to conduct research based on the practical activity you are aiming to complete. This research will need to be referred to constantly throughout your assignment. You should use both primary and secondary sources for your research. This can include books, websites, newspaper articles, surveys, and it should definitely include at least one interview with an expert in your industry. Step three, planning. For this step, you're required to devise a very clear plan on how you intend to complete your practical task. Things you should include are all equipment and materials needed, as you can see here. You will also need to consider any work health safety issues that you may come across and pre-plan so that nothing goes wrong. And finally, you will need to think of a step-by-step -step guide on how you plan on completing the practical task. Step four, conducting the practical task. During this step, you're required to actually complete the practical task, whether that's making something, performing something, whatever that task is that you've chosen. You will need to make sure you take photos of each step during the process, or you get someone to take video footage of you completing the practical task. It is recommended you have at least eight steps during your practical task, which you will need to annotate about what was happening in each step. As you can see here, this is a very detailed example of all the steps that this student has done in their practical task. Step five, feedback. During this step, you're required to get some feedback from family, friends, a client that you used for the task, or even a professional in your industry. This feedback will give you an idea of how well you performed the task and areas you can improve. Seeking this feedback will help you to do your final two steps of this task, which is your reflection and self-evaluation. Step six is the reflection. For this part of the task, you're required to reflect on the process, what went well, any challenges you faced, things you could improve on, and also looking at the feedback you received from those people. Step seven, personal evaluation. This is the final step of the assignment for you. For this section, you are required to have a personal overall reflection about how completing this task has helped you to establish further understanding and knowledge towards your future career path. You can evaluate on any skills you learnt, which you can now apply, and any knowledge you developed, which is going to help you gain a career in this workforce. Once you have completed this step, you have completed the entire assignment. 